In this Atari archive, if you can't slam with the best, then jam with the rest. We've seen a slow progression of video game sports through the 1970s up to this point, both on the VCS and off of it. Pong was a deeply simplified version of Ping Pong, and all the other sports games on the original Magnavox Odyssey were functionally the same basic thing. The same holds true for a number of early arcade sports renditions. Hockey becomes Pong with a specific goal area, volleyball and basketball become vertically oriented versions of Pong, and so on. Racing games got to become their own genre pretty early on, however, and baseball followed shortly thereafter. 1978 would prove to be a watershed moment for one particular sport, however, as a full, non-pong version of basketball made its debut on the Atari VCS. Alongside another basketball game that came out alongside the Magnavox Odyssey 2 in 1978, Atari's VCS version of the sport is seemingly the first commercial attempt at the game to really try and translate it into a video game. Creator Alan Miller has noted that he played on his high school basketball team, and as the eldest of six kids, had spent a lot of time in his youth coming up with games for everyone to play. It seemed likely that he wanted to try and translate a sport he enjoyed to the VCS, and he largely succeeded. Miller opted not to attempt a team version of basketball, instead bringing it down to a one-on-one -on -one competition. Each player starts out at the center line vying for the jump ball. Once someone scores, the previous defender will take the ball from under the net while the scorer is set back to the center line to try and defend. To avoid stalling tactics, players can't cross or dribble the ball outside of the court and lines, and the game clock only lasts for four minutes before the competition concludes. And not only is this among the first basketball video games to actually make a real attempt at depicting the sport accurately, it's the first one to use an angled three-quarters forced perspective viewpoint which would become the standard for a great deal of basketball games going forward. In a fall 1983 Creative Computing Video and Arcade Games interview, Miller explained that he really enjoyed working out the perspective side of basketball's design, though he noted it wasn't perfect. After the game came out, he got feedback from players finding it difficult to follow the ball's movement without some kind of shadow. The joystick allows each player to move around the basketball court, with the defender always facing the ball. To shoot, the player with the ball pushes in the button, causing their character to stop moving and begin waving the ball above their head. Depending on where their character is in their animation cycle when the button is released, the ball could fly high and long, or low and fast. Regardless of where you are vertically on the playfield, the ball will always go right towards the hoop, and the perspective is odd enough that as long as it lines up with the net, it'll likely pop in. The defender can push their button to jump and try and block the shot, though only when the ball is in its upward arc. You can also steal the ball by lining up the two basketball players and running past as the ball is being dribbled. There's no goaltending, no three-pointers, no fouls, just dribbling the ball, stealing, and shooting. That's basically all there is to the controls. The difficulty switches will adjust the individual player's movement speed, but there aren't a bunch of variations to get a handle on. Well, save one. Miller included a computer opponent in this game, which will play more aggressively the closer the score is. This opponent is incredibly difficult to beat, as it does a good job of being right in your face to steal or block the ball, and it rarely misses its shots. It provides an impressive challenge, especially if the human player has flipped the difficulty switch to move more slowly, which I can really only recommend if you're extremely good at this game. But like many early VCS games, when you have two human players, basketball shines. It's a fast game, and the adjustable character speeds is in an admirable way to get the handicapping to work effectively. I mentioned Magnavox's basketball game earlier, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk a bit about it here given that it came out about the same time as Miller's Atari Kart. Like Miller's game, the Magnavox version written by Sam Overton is a one-on-one -on -one affair, but it lacks the nuances of the Atari VCS game. When the ball is being shot, there is no way to actually control its arc. Rather, it is entirely random and could just as easily bounce back into the playfield. This playfield, incidentally, is not the same three-quarters forced perspective of the VCS game, but a simple side view that limits its two human players to sliding left and right. There's no dribbling or stealing the ball, just get in the way of an opponent's shot to get the ball or grab it on the rebound. This Odyssey 2 release feels like a half-step between the Pong-style basketball games that preceded it, but it is far less sophisticated than what Atari was selling a mere month later. I also mentioned in an earlier video about the difficulty in tracking down release information for 1978 Atari VCS releases. This is still true, 
But thanks to the Library of Congress's own digital archive access, I can say that basketball, alongside practically every other game in the company's 1978 roster, seems to appear for the first time in advertising in October. Specifically for basketball, it first shows up in an October 10th J.C. Penny ad that ran in the Janesville Gazette. It also appears in an ad the following week on the 17th in the Blytheville Courier News, and again on October 25th in the Colorado Springs Gazette Telegraph. While this doesn't rule out an earlier release date for this or any of the other 1978 games we've looked at based on copyright filings, there is ample evidence to suggest that Atari dumped almost all of its 1978 games into stores around October, just in time for the holiday season. Atari's basketball was well received. A February 1st, 1979 article running in Madison, Wisconsin newspaper, The Capital Times, quotes a local Sears electronic games expert as saying that basketball was the most popular VCS game they had. The positive press doesn't stop there. The Xenia Daily Gazette out of Ohio ran a review by Dick Cohen on February 24th, 1979, specifically about basketball and outlaw. Cohen raved about Miller's sports game, calling it one of the very best games any manufacturer had put out. He brought special attention to the defensive play and referred to stealing the ball or simply freezing out your opponent by keeping the ball away as the timer ticks down as being realistic to the sport. Over in Video Magazine, the game was reviewed as part of a broader VCS piece in the summer 1979 issue, where authors Bill Kunkel and Arnie Katz praised the pacing of the game and noted that the computer was a tough opponent when scores got tight. It also preceded two more basketball games from Atari that played quite similarly. In 1979, an arcade basketball game was published by the company, while another basketball title written by Miller for the Atari 8-bit computer line launched for the Christmas season that year. It would be his final game with Atari before leaving the company. And credit to Miller, as not only was his original Hoops game well-liked, but it ended up being one of the only takes on basketball the VCS saw for the bulk of the console's market life. A two-on-two -two version of the game, titled Real Sports Basketball, was in development in 1983, but ended up cancelled because the game wasn't coming together particularly well. The prototype that is leaked out looks marginally better than Miller's 1978 game, but doesn't play as well, with simplified ball stealing and less nuance to the mechanics of basketball in general. Atari did manage to release a basketball game, Double Dunk, near the end of the decade that brought a two-on-two -two half-court version of the game to its aging workhorse. Whoever isn't controlled by the players becomes computer controlled, and the game features options to adjust the length of the game, shot clocks, three-pointers, lane violations, and fouls. It's a robust game, though while it is clearly more advanced than Miller's original game, it also plays rather differently, just as a matter of having more players and a different viewpoint. And even after Double Dunk came out, Atari continued selling the original basketball cart. Between 1986 and 1990, about 91,000 copies of the game were sold. Miller himself would use the perspective lessons he learned making basketball to refine his next VCS sports game, Tennis, which we'll look at in depth down the line. More realistic takes on basketball would follow, notably with Mattel's NBA Basketball for the Intellivision, but the fast and loose arcade-style approach at the game would prove durable. Titles such as NBA Jam may not have been directly influenced by Miller's early VCS title, but their DNA can be traced back to the renditions of the game he put together here. VCS struggled somewhat with its non-racing sports games for a while, but basketball nails the shot and proves to be one of the system's most enduring, albeit lesser-known, titles. Next time, Atari brings out its keyboard controllers and challenges us to use our brains.